Lord, that it has penetrates the hearts, the minds, and the souls today, God, Lord, and that be for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. Yes. And Lord, we just ask you to watch over our pastor, God. Yes. Lord, we ask you to watch over his wife, his family, Lord, yes. and everything that he has watched over, God, yes. Lord, as he watches over our souls, God, and our spiritual well-being, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just ask you to touch him right now, yes. Lord. Lord, yes. we just ask you to strengthen him, Lord, yes. where he's yes. weak, God, yes. to burn him up right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, yes. to protect him from all hurt, harm, or danger, Lord, yes. and from the wiles of the enemy, Lord. And Lord, we just ask you to, um, to just watch over him, Lord, and just to lift him up, Lord, yes. where his head is bowed down, Lord. Yes. Lord, let him know that you are still God, Lord. Yes. If we didn't know it too, but Lord, remind him, Lord, that, that you are still there with him, Lord. Yes. And Lord, that we are here uh, following him as he follows you, Lord. Yes. So Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Yes. Lord, we thank you for our church family, God. Yes. Lord, we just pray for those that are sick among us, Lord. Lord, that you just heal them in their mind, their bodies yes. today, Lord. And Lord, let them know that their lives are valuable yes. to you, God. And Lord, we ask you to strengthen us, your people, God, as we go forth, Lord, with your word to declare to the nation, God. And Lord, we lift this prayer up in the name of Jesus and cover it in his blood. Yes. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank you all. Uh, amen again for just being here and tuning in with us. Um, uh, we're just going to expound on the book of Job. Amen. In chapter 2, uh, I know Bishop on Sunday, he uh, preached uh, at, at Abundant Life talking about God was the hidden giver uh, on uh, chapter 1 and in verse 20 through 22. Uh, uh, let's see. In verse 20 and 22. Uh, 21 through 22, when it talks about Job, it says, Naked I came into the world, and naked I shall return. Uh, so we, right now, I just want to expound on chapter 2. Uh, it's a topic that, that has been, uh, that has touched me, and um, uh, we'll just go into chapter 2, amen. amen. Okay, so beginning in verse 1, it says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and eschewed evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, he all that a man hath he will give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand. But save his life. Amen. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sword and boils from the sole of his foot until the crown, until his crown. And he took him to potsherd to scrape himself with it. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thy integrity? Curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Mm. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of the evil, this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place. Eliphaz, the Temanite, and Bildad, the Shittite, and Zophar, the Naamite. And they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not. They lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one's mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to speak to you on the subject of the value of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in 
chapter one, uh, it was a, around the same scenario when God said, have you set your eyes upon my servant Job? This man that is faithful, that is righteous, that is blameless in all of the earth. Have you set your eyes upon him? Um, we know that in the Bible, and when it talks about Jesus uh, being out in the wilderness and how the devil came to him uh, and tempted him because he wanted his worship. But not only did he want his worship, he wanted his life. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of times we don't, we don't really realize the value of life until it's gone. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. But just how God, we were created in God's image and in his likeness. And uh, Romans 14 tells us that all the lives belong to God. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 18 tells us that all souls are his. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're created in the image of God. We're created in his image and his likeness. How valuable is our life mm -hmm. to God? Mm -hmm. Our life must be pretty valuable to God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if something is so valuable to God, how much more valuable is it to the devil? Amen. These are some of the things that we really may not consider, some things that we may not just, we, we say life is valuable, but then we, like I said, we realize that life is so valuable when it's gone. But just the value of our life as we are living day by day, moment by moment. Mm -hmm. And in and, and the story of Job, uh, in these several chapters, it goes on and on about how Job lost his, his livestock, his camels, his sheep, his uh, all of his herd, uh, even lost his children. Sometimes we know how the devil will come back, back to us again and again and again. He'll hit us on the left. He'll hit us on the right. He'll hit us on the knee and he'll hit us on the other knee. You know the whole uh, old song, rock, 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 hit him in the knee, rock, 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 hit him in the other knee. That's how the devil come to hit us. He's coming to knock us down any way he can. Because not only does he want our worship, but he wants our life. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, I'm so thankful that God said, you know what? Job is in your hand, but you can't touch his life. Yeah. Um, and I want to make this a, a lot relatable to us today. Um, dealing with, especially dealing with kids, even more so now in my life. Uh, even us on, on an adult basis and in our adult lives and everything, we're so attacked in our lives. Children are attacked uh, going through the social media where, where you have uh, Snapchat or TikTok or Facebook or whatever. There's so many things that are impactful on their lives right now where they have to look a certain way. They have to dress a certain way to feel like they're acceptable. Right. Uh, we have to be a certain status. We have to hold a certain position to feel like our lives are valuable. But then sometimes when the devil comes in and starts hitting us, then we start to question our value in life. Mm -hmm. Down here in the scripture where, where his wife knew that he, Job's wife knew that he was stricken with this pain and he was in agony, he was going through. They had already lost their livestock, their well-being. They had lost their children. And she had told Job, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Mm -hmm. But Job told her that that was something foolish. Mm -hmm. You speaking something foolish because he knew that his hope and his trust was in God, that nothing good would come but evil <laughs> if he did such. Um, Job knew how powerful and how impactful and the value of his life. Even if, uh, as going back to Bishop's sermon on, on Sunday, when he said, naked I came in the world and naked I shall return. Yeah. Job knew the power and the value of his life. We know that our lives are in God's hands. Amen. That, that uh, he, in everything in him that we live, move, and have our being, that every good gift and every perfect present comes from God above. Yeah. Because he is the giver of life. Yeah. We know that even in the, the uh, scriptures in Job, where it talks about how Job withstood all of these attacks that were hit upon his life, uh, that were hit upon his children, his livestock, his welfare, his well-being, Job still remained faithful and steadfast. Mm -hmm. And he sinned, and the scripture says that he sinned not uh, to God with his lips. And that's, a, that's a great lesson for us. 
far as some of the things that we go through, that we're still able to bless the Lord. Yeah. Uh, we're still able to praise the Lord. Even if we come to church sometimes, we bent over crying the whole time right. because we, we're getting the word and the word is touching our heart, yeah. touching our minds, just touching us and hitting us right there where we need it to, to yeah. touch us in. Uh, I know some people say, well, you know, I'm going through right now, so I don't want to come to church because I'm going to cry the whole time. And, I, and I'm a living testimony. There's been a time where I came to church, and, and that's all I did was cry through the whole service. But I knew where I was getting my strength from. I knew where I was getting my life renewed from uh, and getting my strength from. Mm -hmm. But these are the times where we have to remember that our life is so much more valuable than what the enemy will allow us to believe. Sometimes when we're going through, as Job went through, when he lost his children, when he lost his welfare, when he uh, was struck with sickness, especially when sickness has, stri has stricken your body, sometimes you feel there's nothing else left for you to do but to die. Right, right. But we know that whether we live it or whether we die, we belong to God, going back to Romans chapter 14, mm -hmm. um, because we belong to him. I was talking with a preacher um, earlier today. Uh, and he was talking about, and I, and I could, I could uh, understand where he was coming from, when God has a call on your life, um, and especially if you don't answer that call, if you don't do what the Lord has asked you to do, how God won't rest on you. And, and then the enemy will use whatever God is using to try to use it for his advantage. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, and, and the pastor and I, we were talking about how at, the, at, at one point he was suicidal life because of the things that the devil was throwing at him, and he didn't want to accept the call on his life um, that God had for him to do. Yeah. And it wasn't until that he decided to live for God, it wasn't until he decided to serve God, that all of that stuff just vanished on him. Mm -hmm. um, and it just related to a story at a time in my life when, when the devil was on me. Uh, and, and the devil was wanting me to make make me think that the life wasn't valuable, mm -hmm. that whatever I was going through wasn't as impactful, that it was too much more. It was much more than what God had for me. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that the devil comes to do. He comes to deceive us. Yeah. He comes to, to trick us in our mind um, so that we'll miss out on what God has for us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we know that in the Bible that God came, uh, Christ came so that we can have life and have it more abundant. If the devil knows all the things that God has for us, how much more do you think that he's going to be coming trying to deceive us right. uh, and trying to, uh, 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 to divert us from what God has for us to do? But it was a time that in, in my life that even though I felt the attacks of the enemy coming upon me and coming upon my mind, I had to be able to tell the, uh, tell the devil that my life, as in the scripture said, my life belongs to the Lord. Amen. For the Lord I shall live, and for the Lord I shall die. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. when the uh, even when the enemy was coming upon me, sometimes we can even take this to these people, people in our community, especially because there's so many people that are bombarded with things in their life, especially when it comes to suicide, taking their own lives, and feeling that their lives aren't valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but I even had to take the stand upon uh, the devil and tell him that my life, Devil, I said, you want me to do something that you can't do. Right. As in this scripture right here in Job, God told uh, Satan, He said, you can do, you can do it, but you can't take his life. Right. When it, when he came about, uh, came to God and talked about his children and his livestock, He said, you can do that, but you can't take his life. Right. When he came to the Bible and talked about skin for skin, uh, God said, He's already in your hands, but you can't take his life. A lot of times we're, we're bombarding, and I've talked to other ministers as well, too, other people, uh, how the enemy has come, of people, uh, come upon people's minds about taking their lives uh, because they feel so invaluable. They feel the pressures of life will take them down, and they feel that it will be so much easier. Okay, let me just go ahead and do this. Okay, I don't want to do this part of my life. I don't want to do this. It's just too much for me. But how valuable our lives are when God told right here, saying that, Job's life, he would do everything but take his life. Mm -hmm. There comes a time in our life where, where we have to take a stand, even though the Bible says that we belong to God, there comes a time in our life where we have to take a stand and to realize that
the value of our lives and how God values our lives. Yeah. There comes a time in our lives where we have to stand up to the devil or to the enemy or to whatever is trying to persuade us not to follow God to let them know that our lives belong to God. Amen. Yeah. Um, that, that the devil may try to persuade us to live a, life, a lavish life, but we know in the scripture just says, what, what is the forfeit of man to gain the world but to forfeit his soul? Why be afraid of somebody that, that can take your life, but worry, worry about the one that can destroy your whole soul? All right. All right. All right. Um, and that goes back to the value of life. Uh, remembering that, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, created in the image of the invisible God. Amen. Amen. Knowing that our lives are valuable. Sometimes we have to stand against whatever, sometimes a job that may be preventing us doing what God has for us to do or being able to make it here to the to the house of the Lord, amen. Uh, Cause I know a lot of times it takes sacrifice to be here. A lot of people work, a lot of people have school activities with their children, but it takes a sacrifice, amen, to be able to be here, uh, to hear the word of God, amen. that will be able to renew us in our minds and to renew us in our spirits, amen. Uh, Romans, I believe chapter 12, verse two, it says, tells us to be, be there transformed by the renewing of your mind uh, in the acceptable will of God. In order to be renewed in our mind, amen, we got to be able to be here to hear the word of God, be, to be able to um, be, able to be upon, amongst our brothers and sisters, amen, to get that strength, to get that encouragement, to get that stuff so that we can withstand we'll the wiles of the devil. Because going back to chapter 2, it said that Satan was going to and fro, seeking who he may devour. Now, I know sometimes in my days, sometimes I'm, I'm like, oh, I know there was nothing but the devil. I know, okay, and I know especially when the Lord is getting ready to move on a particular day, especially when it's on Sundays and the mic's not working, amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or everybody is running late. Uh -huh. I, I tell myself, oh, God is getting ready to really move today. Yeah, right. Because, oh, okay, so, so and so had a flat tire. Or somebody called to distract somebody mm -hmm. um, while they were getting ready for church. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that God was going to really move. Mm -hmm. um, the devil is coming to see who he can destroy, mm -hmm. who he can devour. Whether it be through our family, uh, help, uh, making us doubt the value of life and what God has for us to do, or whether it's through um, uh, doubting friends, amen, that may be around us. You know, sometimes we have a circle of people that have always been around us in our whole entire lives. Mm -hmm. uh, people that have um, always been our ace on cool, but they still doing their thing, amen. We came to serve God. Mm -hmm. We came to live for the Lord. We came to to, to get that abundant life that God promised us, amen. Right, right. But the value of life that the devil will use anything, any tactic, any measure, anything that he can to get us to divert ourselves from what God has for us. Yeah. And that's that abundant life, that everlasting life, that eternal life, amen. Mm -hmm. That life where, where death is no more, amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted to bring to, to light, amen, the value of life. The value that God has bestowed upon it that even though God allows these things that the enemy has uh, has used and is still using and has been using all of these many years to divert us from God, whether it be from a death in our family, whether it be trying to touch our finances, amen, whether it be people encouraging us to curse God and die, hey, God ain't healed your body yet, why you still serve him? Right. Mm -hmm. Because we know that in everything that we need is still good. Yeah. Uh, going back to this yeah. sermon on Sunday, yeah. uh, that God will allow us to be in certain circumstances, amen, um, that we sometimes people will say, hey, God ain't with you because of what you're going through. Mm -hmm. But we know that, that even in the example of the three Hebrew boys, when they were in, in the fire, burnt, trying to be furnace, amen, and they said it looked like the fourth man is in there, and it looked like the son of man, mm -hmm. knowing that God, uh, that he'll never leave us nor forsake us, amen. Mm -hmm. That he's always with us to the end of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but these are things that the devil will try to get us to forget. We might be home alone crying in our bedroom because of things that we face uh, through life. Yeah. Uh, because we 
uh, in the midst of losing the loved one, amen, because I've been there, amen, in the, in the midst of uh, being uh, torn away from family, amen, uh, in the midst of being without a job, amen, amen. Uh, all these things that the devil will use, uh, that he'll try to touch to divert us to, to devalue our lives and the value that God, the, the value uh, that God has put upon our lives. Yes. And we know that our lives are so much so valuable because if it wasn't, then why would God have made a plan out for us? Amen. Amen. Jesus. Amen. He knew from the beginning of time how things would go, and he made a way out for us. A lamb. Amen. 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 The lamb that was slain for us, the blood that was shed for <laughs> us, the light that came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. Um, and I'm so thankful that when Jesus died, he said, I leave with you my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. So yeah. that what I did, you may do also, but greater works that, greater works for you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm so glad, amen, that yeah. God saw fit to make provision for us mm -hmm. because of the value of yeah. life. Amen. Amen. I had to tell someone one day, I said, you know what? I said, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say because I know who's I know who I belong to. Amen. And that's one thing that we have to really instill in our children, amen, especially in this day and age, who they belong to yeah. and whose they are. Um, even, even coming from the infancy of a child, amen, let that child know, hey, baby, you, you, you come from God. All you right. belong to God. Right. It's so important even from that day to start letting that child know at a, at a young age yeah. that they belong to God. Yeah, God gave you to me, but you belong to him. Yeah. A lot of times we see babies, uh, uh, us bringing babies, amen, to be Christian, to get them back to God, but really letting them know, hey, you really do and truly belong to God. Amen. Whether you want to or not, you is, mm -hmm. because you created in his image and in his likeness. You belong to him. Amen. amen. Uh, so that's something that even though we've been saved, and uh, came to the Lord, gave our life to the Lord. That's something that we as God's people, we have to remember. Mm -hmm. Because the devil ain't going to give up on us just because we went to the house. Amen. All right. He ain't going to give up on us just because we've been here at the church for 30 years. Or we've been in ministry for this many years. Or we've been singing in the choir for this long. Amen. And we can hit that note and hit that note. Or we can play this instrument. Amen. He ain't going right. to give up. Right. And he ain't letting down. Amen. All right. And so that's why even, even Job, Job was a faithful man, blameless in all the earth. Job had it going on. He had the money. He had the livestock. He had, he had it going on. And his kids, he had, a, a, had a, uh, 10 kids, it says, in the scriptures. But the devil saw fit to try Job's faith. Amen? Yeah. So if he would do that with Job and Job got it all, as, as from my eye, from my perspective, then what would he do with us? Mm -hmm. Now I don't claim to have it all. Some people may say, "Hey, oh, he got it. he got this, he got that." I don't claim to have it all. But looking at Job, we would probably say the same thing. Amen. Oh, Job had it all. He had the money, he had the riches, he had the wealth. Amen. And and he got it going on. But then the devil saw fit to try Job. Amen. But we have that example of faith in him um, and how God valued his life. So we, as the people of God, amen, we got to learn that how God values our life, amen. amen. And we also have to let people in our community know that the value that God has on our life, amen. 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 We have to instill in them because we know that people are fading away left and right, amen, and because they have no hope. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know that we have the hope in the Bible that God is a healer, God is a redeemer, amen, God is a deliverer, that there's nothing too hard for God, amen. 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 We have to... Uh, Share this to our people. As uh, Bishop, and I appreciate Bishop on uh, two Sundays ago uh, when he preached, talking about we were a minister, amen, that we uh, are able to go out here and proclaim um, and have prophesied to people the amen. word of God, amen, amen. because of the word of God is life, amen. amen, and the word of God is what everything that we need for us to live, move, and have our being is, is in Him, amen. amen. Um, so, the value of life. God values our lives so that even, even when we're attacked by the enemy, amen, when the, when the devil comes in and attacks our body, when he comes in and takes everything away from us, God told the devil right then that he could take everything but his life. 
I remember one of the nights that I was just crying um, because the enemy was trying to divert my mind. So, and I had to, like I said, I had to tell the brother right then and then that I belong to God and that I was covered in the blood of Jesus. Um, and it was about two or three weeks later, Bishop preached on the blood of Jesus. Amen. And he said the blood of Jesus can go wherever you can go. Amen. Prayer can go and touch places that you can't touch. Amen. 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 And just knowing that how God has set prayer in motion, amen, how God has set um, uh, the value of the blood of Jesus to cover us, to redeem us, and to set us free uh, from the bondage of sin, how so much how God values our life, how God values uh, the calling on our life, how God values uh, any and everything that he has for us. Um, because we know that the will of God is for us to, to prosper and be blessed and to be in good health, amen. But I just wanted to encourage you today to let you know that God values each and one of our lives. Amen. Amen. If he valued the life of Job, how much more so will he still value your life? Amen. The life of his people that are still living today, that are trying their best to live for him, to declare his word. Amen. And to live for, for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to remember today that, that, uh, that your life belongs to God. Amen. Because the word of God says, Amen. It's not what, what Brother Jerry is saying, amen. amen. It's, not what, um, it's not what I'm saying. It's what the word of God says. Amen. It says that all souls belong to God, amen. Yeah. And that all lives belong to him, whether we live or whether we die. Yeah. But do we see the value that God has on our lives, amen. 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 But I just wanted to encourage you with these words, amen. I hope these were, um, this was a blessing to you, amen. Amen. Um, Bishop, amen. <laughs> but I just, I just pray that this just, that this has touched you, amen. That we can just see the value that God has on our lives, amen. that, uh, and that we can share, share that with people in our community because they're looking for something, they're searching for something, amen. and they don't know what they're searching for. All right. But, but in, in Him do we live, move, and have our being. If in Him is everything that we need. Sometimes I get up. Um, and I say, God, where would you have for me to go today? Yeah. I know where you still yeah. have for me to go. And sometimes I may say, Lord, why you have for him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, then, and then it may become evident. Right. But, but God values each and every single one of our lives. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. No matter how big or small we think it is. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're blessed today. I mm -hmm. um, uh, want you all to remember all the sick. All those that are in hospitals, uh, remember those that are going through bereavement, amen. Yeah. Um, we know the prayers of the righteous avail us much, yeah. amen. So pray ye for one another, amen. Um, remember that our, our um, pastor's anniversary is coming up for great, great. Amen. We did the pastor's anniversary, we had abundant life, and uh, we had a high time in the Lord for uh, Bishop Woolers, amen. Surely, Mr. Tree. Amen. <laughs> um, uh, but he's also going to be with us on December the 4th. Amen. That's right. Uh, Bishop Perry. Bishop Perry is going to be with us on the 4th. Mm -hmm. But he's going to be with us on the 3rd. Uh, Bishop Heron. Bishop Heron. Bishop Heron. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Um, but anyway, we have church anniversary on the 3rd and the 4th. If you haven't bought your tickets yet, see somebody uh, that's a member, amen. Members, buy your tickets too, amen. amen. Uh, just don't sell them, buy your own tickets as well. Amen. Invite your family and your friends, amen, so amen. they can get the word of life as well too and celebrate our bishop with us. Amen. Um, uh, and if you're viewing online and you want to view your uh, buy tickets online, you can do so as well. Um, if you're technology savvy, you can do that. Amen. Just like you're buying tickets with Ticketmaster to go see the uh, Tyler Perry right. show. Amen. 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 You can go online and buy your ticket to uh, for Pastor's anniversary, $10 for children, and then $20 for the adults. Amen. And the food going to be good. Amen. 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 And the food is going to be blessed. Uh, just remember, once again, just to pray for one another. Amen. Sister Keisha has Boston Bus for sale this weekend, Friday and Saturday, for $40. Um, you can contact her on Facebook, Messenger, or on the number that's on the flyer. 
And Sister Belinda Marcella will be selling cakes and pies between now and the mm -hmm. appreciation. So you can order cakes and pies for your Thanksgiving dinner or for just for everyday eating. But um, they're twenty dollars for pies, thirty five I think for the cakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know y'all heard that online because she's right there uh, where the uh, sister <laughs> is. Amen. 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 Well, if all hearts and minds are clear, we're going to go to the throne of grace. Uh, amen. I hope y'all enjoyed the word of the day. Amen. 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 Can we stand for a word of prayer? Amen. amen. Lord, right now, we just thank you, God, right now for uh, being amongst your people, God. <coughs> We count the honor, God. We count the privilege, God. And Lord, we just say thank you, God. Thank Lord, you. to be able to see your people and to touch and greet yeah, uh, one to another, God. Lord, to lift your name up, God. Yeah. Lord, I just pray that this word was edifying to your people, God, yeah. and for the upbuilding of your kingdom, God. Lord, I just pray that you uh, increase your people, God, with might and strength right now, yeah. God, to I'm declare your wonderful works, God. Yeah. Lord, to declare your word, God, to the, yes. to those who are desperate for it right now, Absolutely. God. Lord, I just pray that the word edifies them right now in the name of Jesus, yes. Lord. And not only edify them, but they're able to take it, God, to the groaning creation today, God. Yes. Lord, so that they will know that you are Lord, so they will know that you are God. So that they know that you, besides you, there is no other Lord. Absolutely. That they must put their hope in, God. No drugs, God. No alcohol, God. No promiscuousness. Yes. God, Lord, we just ask that you just be vindicated, God, that you just be glorified, yeah. God, and that you be magnified, yeah. God. Yeah. And Lord, that you use each and every one of us, God, as your vessels, God, yeah. to declare your word, God, and uh, all the miracle signs and wonders, yeah. God, that you have in store for these, your people, God. Yeah. Lord, right now we pray for all those who are sick among us, God. Yes, Lord, yes. that by your stripes we are healed, Amen. God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your yes, word, God, God, because God, on your word we can stand, God, which is a rock of fortress, God, which, which is everything that we need it to be, God, Lord. Lord, we just ask right now, Lord, that you just be upon the body of Christ, Lord, that you strengthen the body of Christ as a whole, God, Lord. Lord, that you minimize the divisions, God, Lord, so that the word may go forth, Lord, so that there may be unity, God, Lord, and the bonds of peace, God, and brotherhood, God. Lord, we just ask that you just give your word, send your word like never before, God, into all of the earth, Lord, because we know the devil is going to and fro, Lord, seeking whom he may devour, Lord. But, Lord, as he goes to and fro, God, we ask that your word go to and fro, God, Lord, just knocking down everything that the devil is trying to do, Lord. Lord, we know that the, everything that the devil has stolen from us, God, Lord, Lord, that you have given back to us again and again, Lord. And Lord, we just ask that you help us to remember your word, God, when we get weak, God. Lord, help us to be able to remind, be reminded of your word, God. Lord, when times get hard, God, knowing that our strength and our hope and our might comes from you, God, who made the heavens and the earth, God. And if you can do all of that, God, how could you not just look upon us, God? Lord, you've given us examples in the, in the Bible, Lord, on which we can reflect, God. Help us to remember those examples when we're going through, God, when the uh, when we're being tried, Lord, yes. by life, God. When we're being tried by sickness, God, and yes. even by death, God. Let us yes. remember that your word is faithful, God. And not one word of your word will come back unto you, Lord, God. Lord, right now, we just ask that you just touch our bishop, God. Lord, we just ask you to touch his wife, God. We ask you to touch his family, God, Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch all of those who are proclaiming your word, God, Lord. That you give them a spirit of boldness, God, like never before. God. Let them be able to stand firm, God, and be able to stand mighty, God, so that they will know that we are your people, God, that we are your servants, Lord, and that the words that are coming out of our mouth are not of us, Lord, but of you, God. Lord, we ask that you to be magnified, Lord God, to be um, to be vindicated in all the earth, Lord. And Lord, we give you all the glory, Lord, and all the praise that only you so rightly deserve, God. Lord, we ask you to touch each and every one of us right here under the sound of my voice, Lord. Lord, touch our homes, Lord. Touch our bodies, God. Lord, wherever we need healing, God, whether it be in our mind or our body, God, or even our finances, God. Lord, we just give you permission to have your own way, God, in our lives, Lord. 
Lord, he does. Lord, we know that in the will of God is the safest place to be, God. Yes. Lord, we just ask you to go with us uh, as we get back on the roads to head back home, Lord, that our destined uh, homes be found better than when we left them before, yes, Lord. And protect us from all hurt, harm, or danger, yes, Lord. And we'll forever give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory that you so only rightfully yes, deserve, God. And we ask this in the matchless and the precious name of Jesus and cover this prayer in his matchless blood, Lord. Yes, Lord. That our heart say, Amen. 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 Thank God. And nobody told you today, we love you with the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.